الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين uh, Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, I'm very happy and it's an honor to be once again with you brothers and sisters through uh, this video uh, uh, live uh, streaming uh, and hopefully, inshallah, that uh, you, brothers and sisters, will benefit from uh, this uh, uh, short lecture. Uh, inshallah, that I will try to uh, evaluate uh, and uh, put a light on some of the uh, points. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal. I'm going to uh, mention, inshallah, uh, uh, or to speak about a few, uh, three or four points. Uh, point number one is, uh, before that, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all of you, every one of you are doing well and you are safe and sound. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to keep us safe and sound from this calamity and all humanity. Allahumma arfa anna al-bala'a wal-waba'a wal-ghala'a. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min al-barasi wal-jununi wal-judham wa sayyi al-asqam. Amin ya rabbal alameen. As we know, a uh, few days are left, Thursday or Friday maybe, it will be the month of Ramadan. And usually we used to have a lecture a week before the month of Ramadan in the masjid. But because of the situation in SubhanAllah, the Qadr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and because of this calamity, uh, we are not able to see each other uh, and to be with each other in the masjid. But I'm trying, inshallah, to, to, to be with you brothers and sisters through this video streaming. Uh, and I'm in the masjid. Uh, at least I can come and I can, you can see the background. It's a masjid and we are still in Quran and Hadith society. So uh, what's happening, uh, the situation is still the same situation. We won't be able to open the door of the masjid for all those activities, especially in the month of Ramadan, the activities that we used to do in the month of Ramadan, that crowd that used to be in the masjid from the Zuhr starting all the way till 11, 12 o'clock at night, subhanAllah. Uh, and in reality, I'm really, really going to miss that activities. Uh, especially for me, it will be very difficult. Uh, for some other brothers and sisters, maybe because they were coming in and off, but for me, because I was a kind of very close and some other brothers also, maybe they, they are feeling the same. I was uh, very uh, close attached to the masjid and uh, subhanAllah, in the month of Ramadan, whenever I used to come after Zuhr, I will not go home until 12 o'clock at midnight or maybe after that. So this having this connection with the house uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the masjid, it will be difficult, very, very difficult for me this year to stay at home and not to be able to come to the masjid and to see my brothers and the sisters and to be with them and to lead the salah and to lead the taraweeh and to be in the iftar with them. All these activities that used to bring us together iftar the salat al-isha the maghrib prayer the salat al-taraweeh and the running of the kids all these things that used to happening in the masjid subhanallah uh, 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 this is uh, this is very very uh, it, it's it's not going to happen uh, so this is the situation this year and uh, it's not, uh, uh, we can't blame anybody in this. This is what's uh, happening all over the world. Uh, so uh, uh, it's, it's very uh, uh, difficult situation for all of us, uh, which is, uh, <clears throat> uh, this is uh, the pandemic and the, 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 uh, the situation which is people are, are, are uh, uh, facing the challenges that we are facing and this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in my short life uh, I never been in Ramadan by myself alone uh, all the times uh, from very young age from the time that uh, I went to college and to the university uh, uh, I'm in the in that uh, in that kind of uh, in this uh, uh, all the time in the jama'ah, ah, all the time with the brothers and sisters in the uh, in the in the masjid. Uh, either I'm leading or not leading. So this is uh, the whole thing. Uh, it will be very difficult, as I said. Uh, but this is uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is testing us in the different ways. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, because maybe we were not able to to appreciate 
the, the bounties and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, we had in our hands, uh, all that we used to have every year, the iftar, the Ramadan, uh, then it was, uh, we just missed all those things. Uh, so this is the, the, this is the now, uh, because of that, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, testing us uh, that uh, uh, we will not be able to do anything this year in the, in the, in the masjid. But saying that, that we will not be able to do in the masjid anything, this does not mean that we will not have an iftar. Uh, the brothers and sisters will not have an iftar or we should not be fasting or, uh, or uh, there will be, we cannot, uh, 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 or uh, uh, this is all what's uh, 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 happening. Uh, one of the brothers is bothering me, telling me that uh, to fix the camera. I'm not sure if it is... Uh, what about now? Uh, this is usually, you know, uh, Brother Ashraf is all the time, uh, 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 all the time, that's what he, he says, all the time he's bothering me. But anyhow, uh, inshallah, uh, uh, is that okay now, Brother Ashraf? Send me a message if it is correct, inshallah. If that is fine, Brother Ashraf, you can send me a text, a text message. Jazakallah khair. Anyhow, uh, uh, that's correct, Brother Ashraf. Jazakallah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Okay. His thumb is up now, so it looks like we are uh, good, inshallah. Uh, so, my brothers and sisters, this is uh, the situation that we are in. Uh, but this does not mean uh, not to have any uh, type of activities with ourselves, uh, not to have any other uh, uh, gatherings. Uh, not to, to, yes, we will not have any gatherings. And uh, I will tell the brothers and the sister, please do not make any gatherings in your house or anywhere. Uh, this is uh, going to affect uh, you and affect other uh, community as well. So having said this, uh, uh, I will suggest some small, small things uh, to the brothers and to the sisters to make it as a routine in our uh, daily life at home, inshallah, azza wa jal. Those are, number one is uh, uh, to have uh, between uh, after Asr, when you pray your Asr till Maghrib, and between that time, have a small halaqa of the Quran at home. Uh, sit with your kids, uh, the family, the husband, the wife, all of you sit together. Uh, if you have uh, uh, anyone in the family that they know the Quran or the kids, even they are memorizing, memorize few Jews or few surahs, there is nothing wrong to learn from your own child, uh, which is uh, if you don't know. If you know as a father, as a mother, you should be leading the halaqa. You should have a circle at home and sit together and read the Quran together. This is uh, other than the uh, individual recitation of the Quran. Uh, have Salat al-Isha, Salat al-Maghrib together in Jama'ah. Uh, just about the Jama'ah, I want to just uh, mention a small point uh, about uh, the brothers uh, that some of your children are memorizing the Quran. If they are not mature, they cannot lead the Salah. If they are not mature, they are not balikh. So in that case, they are not uh, allowed or they cannot uh, uh, lead the salah, the fard salah, the compulsory salah. So as a father, you should be the one who's leading the maghrib in the isha. But if you have a child who is uh, well, uh, inshallah, he's, uh, can, he memorized the Quran and he's balikh, so for sure he can lead the salah and that will be a good opportunity for him. But you can make a taraweeh with yourself as well. You can pray the taraweeh at, uh, at home uh, and you can pray to from congregation if you want with the family if not the best thing is that uh, then this is another uh, uh, in everything my brothers and sisters any calamity or anything which is happening by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are wisdoms there are some hikmah maybe we know that or maybe we don't know that so from the wisdom of this calamity this pandemic which is happening right now 
that we are going to taste the, the exactly the same way of fasting that the Sahaba used to do. The Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in, in their time, there was no uh, uh, congregation in iftars, there was no this kind of uh, five star iftars, subhanAllah, as our masjid was known by the iftar. Uh, there is no this kind of anything. They didn't have all these blessings uh, that uh, we have today. Uh, today, in, if in our in our sufra and the starkhan, if there is uh, not more than five times, there is no juice, there is no three, four, five type of the food there is no this there is no that uh, we get upset and we say to the wife why you didn't cook anything today but in the time of the sahaba they didn't have anything aisha radiallahu anha narrates that the month or two used to pass and in the house of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam there was no fire uh, on and it means there was no nothing cooked because they didn't have not had anything in the, that is this is happening in the house of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam there was there used to be nothing in the house of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam for uh, a month uh, to eat so uh, the only thing that they used to eat al aswadain uh, the date in the water that was the food of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on that time, most of the time he used to eat it with the Sahaba. So the Sahaba, Sahaba, they used to come for Maghrib, they used to break their fast with a few dates, and then they uh, they used to uh, pray Maghrib and go back home. If they had anything, uh, uh, dinner, they used to eat that, and then after that, uh, they used to come back for Isha, and they used to pray Isha. There was no Taraweeh in their time, except that few two days or three days uh, that they came uh, and that they found the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was praying and, they pray, and that was called Qiyamul Layl. Uh, so the uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, 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 praying to Hajjud every night. So the Sahaba, they came and they joined the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not came out for the third and fourth night because and then when they asked him, they said, I didn't want that this become compulsory upon you. So uh, uh, the Sunnah in this one is also, we have an opportunity this, uh, this year, especially for those brothers that you are not working, you are off from the work, you are home 24-7. So the best is to pray the Qiyam, uh, to pray at night, delay your Taraweeh also for three o'clock and before the Sahur, wake up one hour and pray your Taraweeh, your Qiyam. And then after that, you can have a Sahur and pray your Fajr. Uh, that will be the best, uh, very good idea. So these are the, the, some of the wisdom that the things uh, that we are going to see uh, in our daily life, inshallah, Azza wa Jal. This is to say about the, uh, the, the situation that's happening in the month of Ramadan uh, that we are not able to, uh, to, to, to open the masjid. Back to the month of Ramadan. <clears throat> and today's lecture uh, and small reminder, I'm not talking about the virtue of Ramadan, the fadail, the bounties and blessings of Ramadan, inshallah, because uh, at the end, I will let you know about the plan of uh, our brothers in the board and myself, what we agreed upon. We had a small meeting last week. Uh, and uh, uh, inshallah, I will let you know uh, about our plan. Uh, so we are not uh, going to be away from you, inshallah. We will be with you, inshallah. Uh, and I will be uh, a guest of your houses and your families uh, for the uh, uh, for for all these uh, month of Ramadan and some other brother, brothers as well. They will be giving some lecture. But when it comes to the month of Ramadan, uh, uh, receiving the month of Ramadan, people are three types. People usually we we as a humans, as a Muslims, when we receive the month of Ramadan, we are, uh, uh, we, the people, they are three categories, three type of the people. And I hope, inshallah, azza wa jal, and we ask, I make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the third group, from the third group. Uh, the first and the second, the first one is, and I hope that none of us, we are from the first one, inshallah. The first one is that group that uh, all the time, the minute that they hear, about the month of Ramadan, uh, they start thinking, the headache starts, and they start finding, finding out uh, re causes and reasons how not to fast. Oh, my stomach hurts. My, I have a headache. I have a shift for 12, 14 hours. I am working very hard work. It's a, a long day, 18 and 19 hours. And this and that, and especially now, this year, there will be there, people will be saying, oh, we have uh, COVID-19. We have a pandemic a disease. We have this and that. So we are not able to fast the month of Ramadan because of that. And in reality, this question came. 
and not only to me that I got this question, uh, the uh, uh, Fiqh Council in the United States, that there is a lot of scholars in that uh, committee uh, and uh, Azhar and even in Saudi Darul Ifta, all of them, they received this question. Should the month of Ramadan should be postponed for another time because of this COVID-19? But Alhamdulillah, the scholars, all of them, they give the fatwa unanimously that there is no connection. There is no any type of the connection between the disease COVID-19 and between the month of Ramadan. And there is no connection, nothing clear. The doctors, they, they were there in those meetings and they said that there is no way that the, we can say that if somebody is fasting, he might get the, the, the virus. There is no way. Uh, 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 it is actually the opposite. Those people that they are fasting, their immune system will get stronger, so they will be able to fight the virus. So they will be more prepared for fighting of the virus. Walillahi alhamd. Except for those people that they are sick. That is totally different issue. And that is totally different topic. The people that they are sick, and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ it's only those two people, if somebody is sick or traveler, for him it is allowed or for her to break their fast, not to fast. So group number one is those type of the people that the minute they hear about the month of Ramadan, every kind of disease becomes to their body. They become a, 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 a center of uh, diseases. You ask him anything, oh, I have a stomach problem, oh, I have this. But subhanAllah, all of us, we know that. Uh, that the fasting is, is is one of the cure for the stomach. And lots of doctors, there's many, many, many uh, writings about this that the doctor said, if somebody wants to be healthy, if somebody recently, uh, one of the research that one of the brothers who is a doctor, he told me that there is an, uh, an, a Japanese uh, researcher, a scientist who did the research and he found that whoever fasts twice a week, he didn't say the fast like a Muslim, he said who keeps himself away from the food two days, for 12 or 14 hours uh, every day. Uh, this person, if even if he has a sugar type number two, he might get cured. So uh, fasting by itself, it's a cure, it's a medication. And this is because it's a month of Ramadan. And this, is, this month is full of virtues, full of blessings, full of everything that you can see the good it is in the month of Ramadan. And Allah, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in the Hadith Qudsi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, that uh, fasting is for me and I will reward the person who was fasting the month of Ramadan. as li wa ana ajzi bihi. So this is one type of the people that they get frustrated, they get uh, uh, start thinking and everything happens that the month of Ramadan came, what we're going to do, how we're going to fast. These are the people that they want to run away from the fasting of the month of Ramadan. These people, they did not taste the sweetness of the month of Ramadan. These people, they did not taste it, that, that, that virtues, those blessings in the month of Ramadan. They are lacking of all these things. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to keep us. And uh, these type of the people, uh, what the advice from me is for them that they need to think about their iman. They need to think about their uh, claim that they are uh, doing that we are uh, we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They need to think, to rethink about their iman and about their claim that they are doing about their iman and faith. Uh, they, that, that's, that's something very, very important. Type number two is uh, subhanallah. That is what the majority of the people are. And this is why you will see in the month of Ramadan in the Muslim countries, you see the markets are open. It is, it's, it's crowded. Buying and selling goes up. The bills of the houses, the food bill goes, jumps to the, and, and the minute the month of Ramadan comes, the grocery bill uh, not doubles, it goes to the triple and to the four times more in the month of Ramadan, as if it was like, looks like the, the family was fasting for 11 months and the only month of Ramadan is the month that we are allowed to eat. Uh, every day grocery, uh, we don't have this, we don't have that, this type of the juice, that type of the juice, this type of the meat, that type of the meat, this kind of this, this kind of that, the fridge has to be full every day. Like the, as I said, the grocery bill goes up and up and up. It jumps three, four times more which is, it should be the other way around. And these, this, these people at the end of Ramadan, when you look at them, if you, they go, they weigh their self, they gain the weight, four to five to 10 kilo uh, weight they gained. It's, instead of losing the weight, they gain the weight. And that is, subhanAllah, this is, this is a calamity. 
This is a problem. And this is something should not happen. The month of Ramadan is not the month of drinking and eating. Uh, this is not the month that we should be thinking only about eating and drinking. We should be only thinking about the time of the iftar, how many type of the food, and especially uh, when the iftar is in the masajid, the competition between the families, whose iftar was, which kind of iftar he had, this type of iftar we should have. I should have more iftar than him. I should have better iftar than him. I should uh, proceed uh, iftar uh, than his food. So all this, uh, th these things should be uh, very, we should be very careful uh, not uh, to happen and not to let uh, to happen this and try to minimize. Uh, I'm not saying not don't eat and drink. No, we should minimize eating and drinking because eating and drinking in the reality, it makes you lazy. You won't be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. But uh, if you eat just uh, middle and everything, if you go middle, you, you, you choose the middle, you will be saved. Uh, and and uh, and that is what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is advising us not to 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 eat too much, uh, especially in the month of Ramadan, uh, because it will make you lazy, sleepy. So you won't be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa taala at night, and especially. Uh, and the taraweeh, the recitation of the Quran, these things will not be happening properly, which are the, 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 the things that we should be doing in the month of Ramadan. Uh, the group number three, that as I said, that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from uh, 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 to make us from those people. These are the people, uh, this was the Sahaba. These were the Tabi'een. That six months before the month of Ramadan, they used to prepare themselves. They used to be, they used to do what they used to do. They used to uh, prepare themselves for the month of Ramadan. They used to be waiting uh, thirstily and they used to be waiting unpatiently to, 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 and they used to make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure, to be, to give them a health and to make them reach the month of Ramadan, to make them able to fast the month of Ramadan. And this is, these are the people that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when the, 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 the month of Ramadan used to come, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to give them a good news. Uh, they used to let them know, used to give them a glad tiding news. He used to tell them, قَدْ أَظَلَّكُمْ شَهْرٌ مُبَارَكٌ The beautiful month of Ramadan, a Mubarak, a blessed month is came upon you, has reached you. So it means this is a blessed month. This is a month that the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers his people with his blessings. So this is the, the, the month of Ramadan. Uh, these are the third group that they are thirstily, they are waiting uh, for the month of Ramadan and they are, when they received, when they get the month of Ramadan, they are so happy and they, 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 they fast the month of Ramadan with, uh, with, with the complete uh, uh, advices and the, the, the dedication and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just to mention one or two things uh, uh, about the month of Ramadan, about the virtues of the month of Ramadan, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, when the first day of the month of Ramadan comes, the first day, the first night, that tomorrow you are fasting, from that first night, the night, the, the, the Maghrib, that the people see that the moon, or they complete the Sha'ban 30 days, after that, the first night when it starts after the Maghrib, because Islamically, the night comes first and the day comes after. And not like our Westerns uh, that we are here, the day is like tonight, which is the night. Is, this is not the night of, this is not Sunday night. This is Islamically Monday night. So after Maghrib, the minute the night, this night belongs to the tomorrow, to Monday. So the night comes, the first night, uh, the doors of the Jannah gets open. All the doors, abwab, with the plural, all the doors of the Jannah will get open. وَلَمْ تُغْلَقْ مِنْهَا بَابٍ Another narration says, and none of the door will be closed of the Jannah. All the doors of the Jannah will be open. Subhanallah. Which is never happens any other time. And this happens in the month of Ramadan. People will be, some will be entering from the door of the, the, the Salah, some people from this, some people from that. And as, as, as we will mention, inshallah, in the, next, the other lectures, that there is a special door for the, in the Jannah, that the, that door is for the people that they used to fast the month of Ramadan. And it's called ar rayyan And only the people that they used to fast the month of Ramadan, the first group that they are running away, that I mentioned, that they are bringing a reason, excuses after excuses not to fast, they are lacking of this, they will not be able to enter from this door. 
And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us enter from that door, from the door. Only the people that they will be fasting the month of Ramadan, they will enter from that door, the door of Ar-Rayyan. And the other narration, of, uh, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it comes that Jannah, the paradise, beautifies his self like the, 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 the bride uh, beautifies or the people when they beautify the bride for the groom for uh, 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 that's 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 how the jannah will be beautifying herself for the people that they are fasting the month of ramadan these are some uh, uh, these are the three type of the people uh, that we usually faces we usually see in the month of ramadan uh, the third point that I want to mention uh, is uh, some of the guidance of the Quran in such a situation that we are in and we will be in the month of Ramadan in this situation as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I want to ask the brothers and sisters uh, to make a dua sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, miraculously that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take away this calamity from the humanity and bring us back together in the masjid and bring that, that beautiful uh, activity, that beautiful uh, uh, scenario of the masjid to bring it back to the human, to the Muslim ummah, inshallah. So uh, as I said, what shows the, the situation, the way that we are living nowadays, it, is, it seems like we will be in the, exactly the same way in the pandemic and the coronavirus and all this is uh, what we will be facing this challenge. So there will be no changes. So what is the guidance of the Quran that we should be taking uh, in these days in, the, uh, in this uh, virus uh, overall and especially in the month of Ramadan? Just few points about that, my brothers and sisters. I want you to listen to this carefully. Uh, it's very important, very, very important to, 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 to focus on these points. Point number one that we have to understand, we have to understand that nothing is going to affect us, Not is, nothing is going to happen to us except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote for us and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for us. Nobody can harm us. No power can harm us except what, this is what exactly what the Quran says, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tawbah. Qul, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lan yusibana illa ma kataba Allahu lana, huwa maulana wa ala Allahi fal yatawakkali al-mutawakkili. Qul, lan yusibana, nothing will happen to us, nothing will affect us, nothing will harm us except wa ma kataba Allahu lana, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote for us, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed, huwa maulana, he is our God, he is our uh, Rabb, he is our, our, our uh, sustainer, he is the one who controls everything. So whatever is happening to us today, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for us. And the beautiful hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, when he was sitting behind him in that riding, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was advising him, at the end of the hadith, the hadith is too long, I'm skipping everything, coming to the end, to the point. The point is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, wa'alam, no, anna al-ummata la wajdama'at ala an yanfa'uka bi shay'in, lan yanfa'uka illa bi shay'in qad katabahu allahu lak. No, that all the humanity, all the ummah, the people that if they got together to benefit you with anything, they won't be able to benefit you except what Allah wrote for you. And vice versa. Wa'alam, no, anna al-ummata la wajtama'at ala an yadurruka bi shay'in, lan yadurruka illa bi shay'in qad katabahu Allahu alayk. If they all got together to harm you, to give you, to, 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 to do something wrong towards you, they won't, they won't be able to do anything to you except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote upon you. So all this what's happening, have a belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Accept this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, this is why I'm saying this, that there is a lot of things happening. A lot of people are coming on the TVs, a lot of messages we receive on WhatsApp, on Facebook, and on this, on that, that this is a, 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 a war between the big uh, superpowers and biological war and this and that and this and that. No matter what it is, it won't benefit you or it won't harm you except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. 
nothing. But this does not mean, which is comes on the, in the, and I will come to that other point, which is the point number two, that we have to know one thing. Point number two in this is that everything keeping you away, keeping you safe, keeping you sound, keeping the, the virus away from you, all these things, and nobody can take the bala, the calamity away from us. Nobody can give us and nobody can stop anything from us. Nobody can honor us. Nobody can dishonor us. Uh, and all these matters, all these things are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Namad, أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَى Is there anyone who can answer the one who is in this situation, who is in a calamity, who is in a musiba? Can somebody answer the call of this person? and to take away the calamity from him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the only one who can take away who can take all this calamity take away the calamity this musibah, this bala, the waba that came upon the earth the one who has the power of taking it away from the people it's only in only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who can keep you healthy the one who can keep you safe the one who can keep your family, everyone safe, the humanity and everything, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This should be the aqeedah. This should be the belief. But, as I said, as uh, uh, which I will mention here, that the point number three, and, and I will mention that again in that one, inshallah, that trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave everything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And be honest and you will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? So, to be, uh, 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 to be uh, honest, to be honest uh, and you will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Leave everything, all your matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be honest and certain and sincere and you will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ And the one who leave, make a, make the one who, tr who, who trusts in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for him. But here, what I wanted to mention in the point number one and number two as well, this does not mean, this, this does not mean that we should not use the means of the dunya. We should not go to the doctor. We should not use uh, our, uh, we should not keep ourselves away. We should not uh, uh, make, uh, have a distance or whatever the health uh, department or the, the people in the health department are telling us, we should not keep, uh, we should keep all those what they are advising us. We should take their advices and we should listen to them and, and then we should be trust, putting our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is very important to, to, to have a trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we use all the means and the, the reasons and the causes of this uh, uh, worldly life and this, uh, uh, and, this uh, 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 and all these uh, things. Point number four uh, in the guidance of the Quran that the Quran is advising us and giving us this advice. It is uh, that al to bid dua, and I mentioned that before as well, and I'm mentioning it again because of the importance of this point. Uh, being diligent about the, uh, the 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 dua. Why? Because the dua is the key to every good dua is the key to every single good things. Dua is the thing that can take away the calamity uh, uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from you. And dua is the, the, the save uh, the, every single uh, scared person uh, to be safe. He can get this safety. It's a safety for every scared person. And this is the weapon of a Muslim. 
This is the, 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 the only weapon that you use it and it works 100% in this kind of calamity and in this kind of the time. And this is the only, the dua is the only weapon that can you can use it in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this weapon can take uh, 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 the, this calamity away from you. And not only that, this is the enemy of the calamity. Dua is the enemy of the calamity. It takes it away and keeps it away from you in all these things. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانٌ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي When my servants ask you about me, Tell them فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ That I am very close to them. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ I'm responding. I'm answering the call of the caller. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ Whenever he calls me, anybody who calls upon me, I respond. I answer his call. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي أَنْ وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Point number five. That we have to have a certain knowledge. We have to be sure. We have to have a certainty. Uh, we have to have a certainty uh, uh, that uh, this, the life of this dunya, the life of this dunya is a calamity. The life of this dunya is a test. The life of this dunya is a trial. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us and putting us into the trials in a different way, different times, different kinds. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Mulk, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلَةً الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ The one who created the death, والحياتة, the life, ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا to trial you, to test you, which one of you is doing, going to do a good deeds. ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا which one of you is the one who's doing a good deeds? Who is the one who can be, who will pass this calamity, this trial, this test? How we are dealing with this calamity, how we are dealing with this, with these kind of situation, with the tests, how we are writing, how we are doing, are we failing in our test or are we getting a good mark, A plus, we are passing our tests. And we have to know all the, 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 the pleasures of this dunya the sweetness of this dunya, there is a pain in that. You never see anything is happening in this dunya and then there will be no, it, it will end up all the way, all, every day it's good. One day you will see, you, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the happiness of this dunya, you see one day you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with the child. After a time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes that child from you. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes another child of you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away your, your another beloved, your parents, your father, your mother. You, so all these things, it's, there is up and down in this dunya. The only time you get sick, you're healthy, you go to the gym, everything is, it's not, it goes all the time. Suddenly you see, you get sick. You cannot move even. A cup of water you cannot take for yourself. You have to ask your wife, you have to ask your sister, you have to ask your mom to give you a cup of water. You are not able to go and to get a water for yourself. This is the life of the dunya. And this is what is going to, 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 to. one day you are, you, are, you, are, you are rich, you have a work, everything is perfect, a nice car, a nice house. Suddenly you see, everything goes down. You need to sell your car because you need to pay the house. You need to pay the car 
you need to do this, you sell this, you sell that. You have two, three cards, you want to sell one because you cannot afford anymore. So you see, these are the up and downs of the, this life. The dunya, this dunya, this life is, this is how it is. And the only life that's stable, that's one way, and it is, everything is happy, everything is good there. There is no, 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 no sickness. There is no headache. There is no, uh, no kind of uh, uh, scaredness, nothing. This is the life of the Akhra. That is the life of the Akhra. That is the Jannah. That we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us able to be able to fast the month of Ramadan and to guarantee the Jannah for ourselves, inshallah. This is the month that you work in this month for that life. You suffer in this dunya, and this month you suffer in the month of Ramadan. You 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 get sleepless. You at night you read the Quran, and the day you 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 fast the Ramadan. For what? So you can get a good life. You can get a peace of mind in the Jannah, in the Akhirah. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can grant you the Jannah, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can give you that life. If you want that peace, you need. The, 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 the real, uh, uh, you need to work for it. And this is the, the, the another chance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving it to us. Another opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us. And this year maybe the opportunity is more that we don't have a work. There is no work. You are staying at home. This is an opportunity. You don't have to complain that you had 12 hour shift. You can have enough sleeping, enough ibadah, enough recitation of the Quran, enough repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enough making dhikr. You, you have to you have to make a schedule for yourself to be able to, to, to finish the Quran many times, to be able to sit at night and read your Quran. In the daytime you fast, you make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sit with your kids and read the Quran with them. So what happens to get... You 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 are you you suffer a little bit in this uh, in this dunya and this month of Ramadan you suffer a little bit so you can have a peace in the akhirah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to give to give us that uh, jannah insha'Allah azza wa jal. The last guidance of the Quran in this uh, in these uh, between uh, among these guidance that a mu'min a believer should have a knowledge and certainty. Uh, uh, that with these guidance of the Quran, with the guidance of the Quran, uh, uh, that uh, the one who can cure, the one who is sufficient, is the only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wahdahu la sharika la. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that on the tongue of his Khalil, Ibrahim alayhi salam, in Surah uh, Shu'ara, وَإِذَا مَرِدْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ When I get sick, he gives me a shifa. He cures me. Again, I'm saying this does not mean you got sick, you sleep in the house. No, I'm not going to the doctor because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to cure me. No, that's not, this is not a trust in Allah. This is not a proper iman. This is not aqidah. You go to the doctor, you get the medication, you get the, the prescription from the doctor, but have a faith that this Medication will work for me if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it to work, will work for me. That is why you will see a lot of medication. They work for one and they do not work for the other person. They make a person better, they make the other person worse. It's not the same for everyone. So we have to have a certainty. We have to have this iman, this aqidah in ourselves that the one who can cure us, the one who can say, keep us away and safe and sound, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the only door we should knock. That is the door that we should knock the most. Yes, we go to the doctor, we use all the means of the dunya. But the door that we should knock the most, that is the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one we cry the most to, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one we make a dua the most and we ask, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other points, the other points, the other points. So my brothers and my sisters, uh, hopefully, inshallah, uh, these are the few points that I wanted to mention. 
that uh, to summarize them once again, that nothing is going to happen to us if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not bless. That's number one. But this does not mean you go, you put yourself in a ditch, you go to a place where is, uh, we get together 10 people, 100 people, we come together, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he wants, it will happen. No, 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 no. And we have to know that keeping away and uh, the, the giving and taking away and uh, uh, honor and dishonor and all these things are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the, 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 the things that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Allah, we are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dilig being diligent about the dua, making lots of dua, asking a lots of, uh, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that we, we should have a certainty, a certain knowledge in iman and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this, the life of this dunya is the life of imtihan, a test. This is the life of the trials. This is the life which is full of up and down. And according to this life, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala, Your next life will be, will depend upon this life. What you have done here? What, how did you wrote your test? Did you pass or did you fail? This is the result you will take at the Akhirah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the result in our book, in our certificate on the day of the judgment in our right hands. Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. And um, the last point is about to mention the activities of the masjid. Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. We, uh, we made the, 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 the brothers in the board May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward every one of them. We had, as we mentioned, we had the meeting. And uh, uh, inshallah, azza wa jal, uh, uh, first thing, I want to ask everyone to uh, uh, subscribe to the, uh, uh, to, the, to the channel, to YouTube channel. That's number one thing. Because the whole month of Ramadan, inshallah, there will be a programs. One hour before the iftar, there will be a lecture started, inshallah, and it will finish. Uh, 10 to 5 or 15 minutes before the uh, before the iftar and then there will be inshallah on the time of the adhan we will try to link the adhan for you inshallah so you can hear the adhan and we will try to make the adhan from all the, uh, the same brothers that they used to call the adhan in the masjid so you can uh, hear the same sounds and you can feel that you are uh, uh, we are together we can have that feeling that we are still together we are uh, between each other uh, we hear the same sounds the same uh, the same adhan insha'Allah azza wa jal so there will be every day there will be a lecture about the different topics of our religion especially about the month of Ramadan uh, to uh, uh, insha'Allah to put the light on some of these topics and to boost our iman insha'Allah in the month of Ramadan and to learn from uh, our those brothers insha'Allah that they will be spending their time uh, uh, separating some of their times for these lectures uh, so that is every day insha'Allah uh, the brothers will be in the service of the community uh, the in the hours in the service of this beautiful community of Quran and Hadith society insha'Allah so every day there is a lecture please subscribe to the subscribe to the to the channel so you can get the every day inshallah automatically you get the notice that the lecture is started and try to benefit from the lectures with your kids with your family sit down and uh, watch and listen tend to, to listen carefully to these uh, lectures inshallah and learn from those uh, lectures that is number one number two uh, uh, again uh, uh, as usually all the times we do not do any fundraisings uh, and subhanallah this year whatever ways of income that we uh, used to have uh, it looks like the we will not be able to have those uh, days those uh, uh, activities like the barbecue or any other things that we used to have to to bring some income to the masjid looks like that we will not be able to do those activities this year uh, and other than that uh, may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward every one of you may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, give you the reward of every single penny dollar 10 15 20 hundreds thousand that you paid to the masjid every ramadan you people you brothers and sister was the people that uh, to you kept the masjid uh, life and you kept this door open for uh, uh, for yourself and for the community so it was your help it was your donations and i want you to continue that donations uh, as you stay at home it doesn't mean the masjid does not have uh, expenses the rent of the masjid has to be paid 
The bills of the masjid has to be paid. Uh, and I'm sure, I don't think the uh, owner of the, uh, uh, if there was anything, I will let you know, inshallah, I can promise that. Uh, that uh, the, the, the owner of the uh, property, I don't think he, he uh, reduced the, 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 the rent. Uh, we have to pay full rent. Uh, so we have no choice. And you were the one uh, who was paying the rent. Uh, you are the one who was donating for that purpose, especially in the month of Ramadan. You were more generous uh, than any other time. So I want you to keep that generosity. I want you to keep that uh, motivation, that uh, uh, generosity that you had towards uh, QHSC uh, uh, to have that uh, that uh, that uh, motivations and that generosity towards the masjid. Uh, and there will be at the bottom of your screen, if you check, there is a, a, a link uh, available uh, uh, that you can send the money, inshallah, uh, e-transfer from your home, inshallah. And I know all of you are better than me in the IT and technology. Uh, so uh, if not the kids, mashallah, they are the best. So uh, uh, you can help the masjid. You can send your donations uh, through e-transfer, inshallah. And the link, as I said, at the bottom of the screen, you can see that it will be there. Uh, you can uh, add, uh, you can send your donation to the masjid, inshallah. Uh, there is another point. Uh, I will mention it very uh, summarized now, which is the uh, the Sadaqat al fitr and that uh, needs a lecture, inshallah. I will have a lecture about that, uh, how you pay, but uh, that is also the masjid. Just to tell you, as uh, you, uh, brothers and sisters, used to pay to the masjid, and the masjid used to take care of that and send it to uh, uh, any place, uh, and they used to be distribu distribute that according to the sunnah. Uh, so this year, the masjid is taking that responsibility again. And that's why I said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the brothers uh, in the board. Uh, they are the servants, actually. They are the servants of this masjid. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant them the jannah to them and to their family. So they, with uh, all this uh, calamity, with this situation, they took upon them this responsibility that this year also they will uh, uh, they will uh, collect your sadaqat al-fitr and they will try to send it to a proper place to be distributed properly according to the sunnah. Uh, what is the deadline and how much it should be paid and how and all these, the rulings about that, inshallah there will be uh, a flyer that will be sent it, uh, on the same this link on the YouTube channel and also a lecture inshallah about the sadaqat al-fitr and we will let you know deadline about that as well inshallah and you can send that one as well inshallah whenever you get the full information the full information you can send your uh sadaqat al fitr as well uh online uh, uh you can do each transfer but just mention that this is the money for sadaqat al fitr so the brothers will know and then we will inshallah uh, collect that one and we will send it to a proper place uh, as every year we used to do jazakumullahu khairan mubarakallahu fikum and i hope i was able to to put some lights upon some of the points that we need in our life inshallah uh, Finally, finally, before the dua, the last point is the question and the answer. Between the seven days of the week, there will be one day only for the answers of the questions. So you can send the questions to the same email, inshallah, the email of the masjid, or you can send to my personal WhatsApp as well, inshallah, you can send me uh, your questions and we will collect all these questions and once a week, one day in a week, inshallah, it will be me or any other brother, inshallah, will be answering your questions. So please uh, do not hesitate. This is the time that we should learn a knowledge, our deen. So send your question and do not uh, feel shy. Any question is as far as it is related to the religion, there is no shyness in learning the religion. Uh, please send your question, inshallah, and we will try to answer your questions, uh, inshallah, and if not, we will try to find the answers for those questions and bring it to you, inshallah, azza wa jal. We make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again at the end uh, to keep us safe and sound, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us back to the masjid, to this place uh, that I'm sitting alone by myself here with a few chairs. Uh, so uh, it, it, will be, it will be very difficult for me in Ramadan to come uh, and to give a lecture from the masjid. And as I said to the brothers that I will be uh, doing it from the masjid, uh, it will be very difficult in the month of Ramadan that I'm sitting here and giving a lectures and the masjid is empty. But this is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe we were not, we did not appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings that he blessed us. So this is maybe the, 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 the punishment of those and being unthankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to understand that the, being the masjid, Quran and Hadith society is a blessings of Allah. This, we need to appreciate this. 
if we want this place back and we want to get back in this place, we want to get back in the iftar and Ramadan and Taraweeh and the Salat al Eid and the Salat al Jum'ah, we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to cry to Allah. We need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us back to this place and to make this place a life uh, uh, on us, inshallah, Azza wa Jal. اللهم ارفع عنا البلاء والوباء والغلاء اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجثام وسيء الأسقام اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من جهد البلاء ودرك الشقاء وسوء القضاء وشماتة الأعداء وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته